In this video, we're going to introduce some functional spaces. Let me start with the domain omega that will be bounded and open, included in Rd, where d is the dimension of the space. Basically, it will tell me how many space variables I have. Then let's consider the heat equation. The heat equation is going to be, uh, well, dTU minus alpha Laplace U equals F, where F is a given function, a function that takes T and X and returns FTX. So it goes from Rd plus 1 to R. I also have a boundary condition here, which is a homogeneous Dirac boundary condition. You are at any time for x on the boundary is equal to zero. And an initial condition, when t is equal to zero, then the function u zero anything is basically that given function u naught. So I know f and I know u naught. These will be given functions. Note that when I write here the Laplace operator, I mean the Laplace with respect to the space variables. In other words, it's really um, treating the time and space differently. When I'm writing the Laplace operator, it's only for the d, uh, it's basically the, 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 the d components of x, right? So the second derivatives with respect to each component of x in Rd, x1 to xd. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to separate the time and the space variables. How do we do this? Well, u is a function that is going from rd plus 1 to r, or, or more specifically, from uh, 0 plus infinity, which is the time uh, space, times omega to r. So for a given tx, t is in r plus star, 0 plus infinity, and x is in omega, and so, so to, to, this, to this tx, I associate a real number, which is utx. Now, there would be uh, another way to see this. Instead of taking tx and associating a real number, I could take t, right, at the time, an element of r plus star, in other words, 0 plus infinity, and associate a function, a function that will go from omega to r. So x, capital X, will be a space of function, and at each t, I will associate the function, a function, that goes from omega to r. All right. Now, let me define the space L2 zero t x. So first, let capital T be a positive number and let x be a Hilbert space. Now, as you know, in a Hilbert space, I have an inner product and, of course, I have a norm. So the inner product is here, the norm is over there. Now, let me define the space L2 zero t x as the space of all functions v such that the function t gives the norm of vt in x square is integrable. That will be the definition of the space L2. And of course, I could define Lp by replacing the, the well, L2 by Lp and the square by power p. Okay, let me give you a proposition now. If I consider the application, the mapping that goes from L2 zero tx, the space I just defined, to R that associates to V the integral between zero and capital T of the norm of Vt in x square. Well, this happens to be a norm on this space, L2 zero tx. And you can verify this. It's not very complicated to prove that it is norm. Furthermore, what we have is that we have an equivalence between v is in this space L2 zero to zero tx and the norm in that, in that L2 zero tx norm is finite. Okay, 
Now, let's actually uh, give here a proposition. What I'm going to say is that not only uh, do I have a norm, I also have an inner product. And here is the inner product I have on L2. So basically, uh, L20TX can be equipped with an inner product. And the inner product is simply the integral between zero and capital T of FT GT X, right? I take the inner product in X of FT and GT, okay? And, and, and integrate this between zero and capital T. That will be an inner product on L2. And it's a Hilbert space, which means that on top of being an inner product, the norm associated to this inner product will actually make the, the space complete. So it is, it is a Hilbert space. Now, let me define the space uh, CK0TX. So again, T is a positive number, X is a Hilbert space. Uh, we denote, uh, well, uh, the, with the bracket X, the inner product in X, we have the norm. And now let's consider K an integer which is not zero. Well, actually, if it was zero, that would be giving me continuity. I could, I could still define uh, uh, C0, zero, zero, Tx. So that's, that would be the space of continuous function. So let me actually define uh, that space CK0, zero, Tx as the space of functions V such that uh, the, the mapping that uh, associates T to the norm of VT in X square is of class CK. What happens is that it is going to be a banner space for the norm, which is given here, uh, defined by the sum from M equals zero to K of the supremum of the derivatives of F with respect to, to, to T M times in the norm x.